a reading from the book of Exodus. Although Moses and Aaron performed various wonders in Pharaoh's presence, the Lord made Pharaoh obstinate, and he would not let the children of Israel leave his land. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one, and shall share in the lamb, in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it either from the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, They shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. It shall not be eaten raw or boiled, but roasted whole, with its head and shanks and inner organs. None of it must be kept beyond the next morning. Whatever is left over in the morning shall be burnt up. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you, Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones, I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. To you will I offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was going through a field of grain on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, See, your disciples are doing what is unlawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry, how he went into the house of God and ate the bread of offering, which neither he nor his companions, but only the priests, could lawfully eat? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests serving in the temple violate the Sabbath and are innocent? I say to you, something greater than the temple is here. If you knew what this meant, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned these innocent men. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, brothers and sisters, he is Lord of the Sabbath, prefigured by the Lamb that was slain at the Passover. The blood sprinkled on the houses of the Israelites so that they would be preserved as they got ready to flee out of Egypt while God struck down the firstborn of their captors. This is the one whom we worship. This is the Lord. And as the lamb is sacrificed, foreshadowing Christ being sacrificed on the cross, not only does this open for us the way to eternal life, but it shows us how to live life in Christ. Nothing less than the total dedication of our entire being, our lives, our flesh and blood, our souls, our thoughts, our actions, joys and sufferings. Everything belongs to God because we are the people of the Lamb who was slain, the one who gave everything and who taught that greater love than this no one has than to lay down his life for his friends. Now, Elijah the prophet. We read about this in the first book of Kings chapter 18. Pointed to Christ far in advance by restoring for Israel faith in the one true God. Because there was, the, he, he, he prophesied, he lived, Elijah did, under the most evil of all the kings, Ahab, whose wife was Jezebel. And they fostered among God's people false worship. Not the worship of the one and only God, Yahweh, but the false worship of Baal. And they set up these sacred temples and Asherah poles and all these other things where sacrifices were offered to the false gods, including the slaying of of their sons and daughters, the shedding of innocent blood, which we are doing today by abortion. Same evil, exactly the same. And that's why the exile occurred. That's why the enemies of God's people came in, overran their land. This happened both in the northern kingdom and in the southern kingdom and took the people away into exile. God hates the shedding of innocent blood. Elijah said, we have to stop this. And he called together the prophets of Baal. He said, I'm the only remaining prophet of the Lord. He said, bring the prophets of Baal here. We're going to see who the true God is. And he did a contest calling down fire from heaven. He called down fire and it came. They called, the prophets of Baal called on Baal to send out fire and nothing happened. But he did this in order to appeal to the people Stop straddling the fence. If the Lord is God, serve him. If Baal is God, then serve him. But stop waddling along with two opinions. Stop trying to have it both ways. Stop being divided within yourselves. Stop playing games. Stop being half-hearted. Make a full and total commitment to the Lord. You know where all this happened? At Mount Carmel. That was the location for this showdown between mediocrity and the total devotion to God that we are called to have as followers of the Lamb who was slain, even ready to shed our blood. No mediocrity, no straddling the fence, no trying to have it both ways, no saying one thing and doing another, no claiming to be a devout Catholic, but fostering abortion. Pay attention, Biden, Pelosi, and all the rest of you hypocrites. No compromise. Elijah called on the people to make a total commitment. And it happened at Mount Carmel. You know, as the Christian centuries unfolded, hermits gathered there in the Middle Ages, following Elijah being devoted to his total devotion to God. That's what the name means, by the way. Elijah means, my God is Yahweh. And 
they started this society of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, birth of the Carmelites. And God bless the Carmelites and all those associated with them in, by various bonds and commitments. God bless them all today on this beautiful feast day. And many people, many of you, I'm sure, join in this spirit of devotion. You know, the devotion to Our Lady ties in perfectly with this because what does she teach us except do whatever he tells you? She teaches us total commitment to Christ, no compromise, and those who wear the scapular, and that's why today is this feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel because it's the day that she gave the scapular to St. Simon Stock. This scapular is two little pieces of cloth attached with a cord that you wear uh, as a sign of complete commitment to the Lord through Mary, through Christ, and total abandonment to the will of God this is really exactly what happened at Carmel. The, the, the Carmelites, in founding uh, this movement, had this devotion to Elijah as well as to Our Lady. And really, it's the same spirit, isn't it? Lord, I am totally yours. You are God. Do whatever he tells you, Mary says. It all points to that total commitment to the Lamb who was slain for us. Let us live that devotion. Let us renew that commitment. Let us be solid and pure and without doubt as to whom we follow and whom we serve. Indeed, let the name of all of us and each of us be from this day forward. Elijah, my God, is Yahweh and him alone.